on today's episode of Locked On Canucks. Another blown third period lead for the Vancouver Canucks as they move to 0-3 on the NHL season. Let's get into it. Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Canucks, the show that keeps you locked in on all things Vancouver Canucks. Of course, I'm your host, Justin Pooney. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Process Sports with an underscore at the end. That is Process Sports with an underscore at the end. Also, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type in Locked On Canucks. We will be the first thing that shows up. I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. Um, Also, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast services. Hey, 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 hey. Do we press the panic button now, guys? Is it time to press the panic button? Uh, what do you guys think? I don't know. I thought the Canucks were going to be in tough uh, to get their first one on the season in Washington. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was right. You know, They finished the first period tied at one, and then the Canucks took a 4-2 to two lead in uh, after the two second period and then the wheels fell off in the third period like they have the last two games previous Alex Ovechkin and Washington's best players just got going in the right time and that salvage what would have been uh, the worst start for the Capitals in a decade Ovechkin scored twice and they defeated the Canucks 6-4. And the Canucks now move to 0-3 on the season. And things are not looking good. Bruce Boudreau is still looking for a career win number 600. Elias Pedersen played good, had a goal and an assist. But once again, the theme of the night is the Canucks blew another multi-goal lead. Having their coach, Bruce Boudreau, call them mentally weak at this stage. He said, when you're on a roll, you're waiting for good things to happen. When you're in something like this, you're waiting for something bad to happen. And something bad did happen. Um, Of course, there was the uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, who had three assists um, and also slashed or whacked Kyle Burrows in the face, which surely should be a suspension. Uh, I'll get into that to a bit, but what do the Canucks do now? Where do the Vancouver Canucks go from here you know they go well you remember Kawhi Leonard once said after the we're dead the Toronto Raptors were down 0-2 to the Milwaukee Bucks in Eastern Conference Finals they said where do you go from here and Kawhi astutely said I'm going to Toronto well the Canucks are going to Columbus uh, to face the Columbus Blue Jackets who just so happen to be 0-3 and then they finish up the road trip on Thursday um against the Minnesota Wild, who just so happened to be 0-3. So uh, the Canucks won't have too much time to dwell on this collapse. Um, I would want to see something different for tomorrow. Um, Just something, a change, perhaps, um, that's changing up the goalie, which they, of course, will. Changing up the forward lines, doing something, because this is not working right now. This... This team is lacking that killer instinct. That This team is lacking that ability to close out uh, games. And I talked about it yesterday where if this team wants to get where we all were, at least where I expect them to be, um, they need to have a killer instinct. Um, you can't be... And, and Brujo said it after the game. He thought that they've been the better team in uh majority of the games. And quite frankly, the Canucks haven't played bad hockey. You know, they've scored, you know, they've scored goals. They, you know, they scored four goals on the road in Washington today. You know, that should be a, a recipe for some success. Although they haven't had any success. Thatcher Demko has not looked good. Um, the defense core has been 
you know, giving up a whole bunch of shots. That Thatcher Demko was peppered again uh, tonight. And I just don't know where this team can go. Like, where do they go? Now, they had a players-only meeting uh, after the game. They were, no, they're the first. The Canucks are actually in NA. Here's a piece of stat, a piece of history for you. Uh, the Canucks are the first team in NHL history to lose their first three games of a season while blowing a multi-goal lead in each contest. Um I don't know. You know, Demko allowed six goals on 30 shots. Uh, they had a players only meeting, which I don't know what's going to come of that. Um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the, the locker room dynamic, you know, the country club mentality. Uh, do Bo Horvat and JT Miller really get along? Is there a leadership struggle uh, within the Canucks? And quite frankly, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, the way this team plays has played so far this season uh and early on it does not the power play has been struggling the penalty kill has sucked um and we thought it was much better i'm going to touch on uh Ilya Mikheyev in a in a bit but it's just it's not looking good it is not looking good for this team and i don't know where to go they go from here do they what happens where where do the canucks go do they make a trade is there going to be a firing? Well, I don't think we're there yet. If there's going to be a firing, I don't think Bruce Boudreaux's job is in jeopardy. Uh, I know people out there are thinking that, but I just feel for the fans. Um, it's just the same old story. Uh, you know, they, they, they lose. And then you talk about how bad this team is and how they make, been making the same mistakes and the same issues over the last, however many years it's, I was watching this game today and I tweeted out my, you know what? The Canucks, the Canucks are down. Maybe that's a good omen. And what do they do? They storm back. They take the lead two goals in 11 seconds. Uh, and it, you know, they went to the third period of the lead and immediately then I kind of got scared. I'm like, you know what? Like, this is not good. Uh, but the positive side, the optimist, the optimist in me felt that, you know, they could maybe learn to close this game out and they could close it out, and uh, they did not. You know, the, I, I don't know what's going on. JT Miller has looked really bad. Um, he doesn't doesn't look like the same player. Um, could that be just, you know, something to do with the offseason? He had a whole bunch of family stuff, you know, the whole contract. I don't know. All I know is he was here in town. Um, and he was supposed to, um, you know, be a catalyst, and he hasn't done that yet. So uh, I don't know where the Canucks go from here. They go to Columbus, but, man, they I, it could just be as simple as just get a win and get off, get on the board. Once you kind of get that monkey off your back, you kind of go flowing, but I don't know. So we're going to dive further into this. Hopefully we get Ilya Mikheyev back tomorrow. I'm going to touch on that and how bad the Canucks can do after this break. Um, but first, I want to talk to you guys about Simply Safe. The numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of you don't earn the trust of many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. They protect you when, with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents. So, as you guys all know, I travel back and forth from Toronto and Vancouver quite frequently, and I want to make sure my home uh, is secure and safe when I'm back in Vancouver. Um, and it just with their technology, the crystal, the crystal clear HD cameras, I can control it off my phone. Uh, it's very easy, and I can feel safe at any time. Whenever I'm back in Vancouver, I can just pull up my phone, look, and make sure my house is safe. Um, it actually happened one time where it was very beneficial because somebody tried to drop a package off, and they, I guess, the sensor went off, and you know, I got a call, and the support staff called me, and we was able to take care of it because I was kind of freaking out. Uh, 
And with they have 24-7 professional monitoring. They call you at the moment any threats detected, and they detach the police and first responders, even if I'm not home. Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real, and even hazardous sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Our monitoring experts use proprietary advanced response technology to re- visually confirm when a break-in is real so you can get the highest priority police dispatch. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com locked on slash locked on NHL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for locked on NHL. Excuse me, when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan, when you get your first month free, visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL to learn more. There is no safe like Simply Safe. All right. Welcome back. Locked on Canucks, the show that keeps you locked in on all things Vancouver Canucks. As I mentioned earlier, uh, three games in the Canucks penalty kill is near the bottom of the league, a place that I think nobody expected. Um, if thought We all thought if the Canucks wanted to do well and reach the playoffs this year, uh, both penalty kill and power play had to be in the upper half of the NHL. Well, it's not there. Um, there will be a welcome sight, though, hopefully, uh, to the penalty kill. Ilya Mikheyev is close to returning. Uh, Mikheyev did not play tonight, but it's expected, according to Darren Dreger, unless there's any setbacks, will be in the lineup tomorrow in Columbus. Of course, Mikheyev hasn't played uh, at all since the first preseason game, September 25th, with what the team called a lower body injury. Um, he was playing on a line with Elias Pettersson, Andre Kuzmenko, and I think he will slot right in to that Um that slot. I don't think Niels Holgander has done anything worthy enough to be uh, in that spot. When you look at it, uh, Niels Holgander has struggled. Um, he has not looked. When I look at Niels Holgander, let's look. At, when you look at a stat line tonight, he was a minus one with one shot, uh, no points, and you really didn't notice him out there. Um, and if he's going to play in the top six, you got like I noticed Andre Kuzmenko. Of course, he had the assist on the Curtis Lazar goal. Uh, JT Miller, uh, you know, did play a little bit better. He was even. Um, and I think when I look at it, you got to put uh, Ilya McCabe up there. You know, of course, um, he was supposed to help the penalty kill, and he was going to be like the one of the anchors. And I want to see what he can do when he's out there. Um, he was at he played that role well um, last year, and he also was one of the Finished one goal behind the league leader uh, last year with four shorthanded goals. Um, of course, it also will help JT Miller. Uh, no Canucks forward has played more than JT Miller this season. And he also leads the team in shorthanded minutes. I, While JT Miller can do a lot, I think it would just be a great weight off his shoulder if Ilya Mikheyev come get back in the lineup. Um, and like I said, I don't know if it's going to... I've been seeing... A lot, all these tweets about how the Canucks have no spine, how the Canucks have no killer instinct, and it's true. Uh, will Ilya Mikheyev bring a spine or killer instinct? No, but will he kind of allow the slime to kind of get more in swing? Again, it's still early. Yeah, you can tell in my voice that I'm upset and kind of just disappointed because I suspected that this season was going to go differently. I thought this season, um, this team was going to start off with a with a Impressive start. Now, they're going up against two teams, a team in especially Minnesota that's given up 20 goals in their first three games, um, which is not good. Now, those teams, along with the Canucks, are going to be very, very desperate teams, and the Canucks are going to have to take their best punch. And the Canucks have to give their best punch because if they don't, imagine if they go home on Saturday 0-5. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if the Canucks go back home winless and don't have a W on the board on Saturday night when they return home from their home opener. We've seen bad stuff happen before with fans here. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's not going to be good. And this team needs to pull it. I don't know what this, this, this input, this players only meeting is going to do, but something's got to give. Um, What's crossing my mind a lot right now is uh, Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts, who has hasn't lost a game all this year. Uh, he said when they got, I think they got 
wax last year in the game. It's like, it's like when you take a deuce, you don't look at it, you just flush it. Um, and I think the Canucks just need to flush these first three games. Just don't even... You played some good hockey. You did some good stuff, but just flush it and just try to start new in Columbus tomorrow. When you land in Columbus, your season starts there. I know we can all relay the, these last couple of games, but you know what? Your season starts in Columbus. You have 79 games to turn this shit around and get it going. So I'm intrigued to see what this team looks like in Columbus tomorrow. Um, how they're going to perform, what is going to happen. Um, so we're going to – I'll kind of preview a little bit of the Columbus game after this last break before, of course, tomorrow we'll have a full pregame show. And actually tomorrow we'll do a postgame show um, after the following the Columbus game, and then we will set up a pregame show on Wednesday for Minnesota. So that's how we'll kind of break down. But coming up after this break, I'm going to kind of tee up uh, the Canucks versus Columbus. Thanks for making Locked On Canucks your first listen today. Now you make your second listen, Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local and, 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 and local analysts excuse me, that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game 2 on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast services. Okay. Guys, we are back. Locked on Canucks, the show that keeps you locked in on all things Vancouver Canucks, of course. Um, Canucks travel to Columbus um, to f- take on the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are also 0-3 on the season. Um, both teams have struggled uh, mightily. Uh, the Canucks have given a, a 2.5 goals for, while Columbus is 1.67. So offense really hasn't been that great. Uh, goals against are pretty similar. Shots against are Columbus gives up 35, almost 36 shots a game. Uh, so the chance is there. The, the Blue Jackets haven't played, haven't been world beaters, haven't been gangbusters, haven't been uh, the best. Now I'm interested to see what Spencer Martin, who I think will probably get to start tomorrow, can he provide the spark for the Canucks? Uh, like I said, Ilya Mikheyev should be in the lineup. I'm interested to see how he can slide in. Hopefully, with Elias Pettersson. Um, and what will the Canucks do? They need this. Is I think it's too early. To, I don't. I don't want to say it's a must-win game, but this is a must-win game. The Canucks have to win this game. There is no if, ands, or about it. The Vancouver Canucks have to win this game in Columbus tomorrow. Um, if they want to salvage this road trip or salvage anything uh, in this season, so uh, in this early season, because right now it does not look good, and the Canucks have to have to get this one. This is a must-win game. Uh, I don't, I'm not trying to exaggerate any of that, but the Canucks need to win this game, and we shall see what happens. Like I said, the can when I look at the Blue Jackets, they have some nice pieces. Of course, they acquired Johnny Goudreau. Uh, they acquired, um, excuse me, they have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have Johnny Goudreau, uh, they have Jacob Vorchek, who's, you know, the passes prime, uh, they have Kent Johnson, Burnaby kid, who's a good, very good player. They have Elvis Merzlikens, Adam Boakvist, this Eric Goodbranson, of course, gave him a big deal. Zach Lorenzky, there's some guys on there, but this team is not good. The Canucks should beat the Columbus Blue Jackets, and it shouldn't, and they have to. Like I said, they have to. There's no ifs, ands, or about it, and I'm hoping this team shows up better tomorrow. This team shows up ready to play, ready to win, uh, because fans are, if you look at on Twitter, the fans are running out of patience. So it is time for the Canucks to pick it up, play hockey, and do something, and that's it. I have There's nothing else I have left to say. Uh, this season has been a major disappointment to begin with, and tomorrow night, if we're doing the same thing and I'm coming here bloviating about how upset and the Canucks blew another lead, well, we're going to have a big problem. Uh, but that's all the time we have today for Locked on Canucks. I want to thank you for making Locked on Canucks your first listen of the day. For your second listen, Locked on NA, Locked on Fantasy Hockey, Steel Road, Dean and Phil Livingston bring you the fantasy edge and keep you ahead of the competition with daily updates of news analysis and advice Monday through Friday. And of course it is available wherever you get your podcasts. Guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you.
tomorrow.